Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Ryan McBerto is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. And you know what? As usual, I start with, with going with a particular show that I'm going to have. And guess what happens after that? What happens is I change it based on something that I read. But before I get started, I want to remind you guys to do that thing that I always ask you to do. And that is to please remember to share this on your wall. Share this on your Facebook wall. Share this on your Facebook page. Share this on Tumblr. Instant message. Or rather, not instant message. Yeah, actually, do share it via instant messenger. And also remember to share it on Instagram. That's what I was talking about. Instagram, the good old Instagram and all these other guys. Why is that? Because the Facebook algorithm has changed and it requires you to share quickly for it to know, well, I guess people kind of like this thing and then they're going to go ahead and use it. So that's one of the first things that I want to ask you to do. The second thing that I want to ask you to do is make sure to like the page, Politics and Right with Egberto Willis. Again, that is Politics and Right with Egberto Willis. Please like the page. What that does for you is whenever we are coming on air, whether it is now or any other time, sometimes we, do, we don't necessarily do it at 3 we, Well, this show is permanently at 3 o'clock every day, but sometimes what we do as well is we may have some breaking stuff that's happening and you can get a notification when that occurs and we put that out. If you're a member of the Facebook page, if you're a member of Blog Talk Radio, if you're a member of um, the, the Coffee Network, you will then get a notification that something like this is happening. Again, for those who are just coming in, please do remember to go ahead and share this page on your Wall, share this uh, program on your wall. Welcome aboard. Um, Marilee Trevino, Shirley Stickney, Kathleen Morgan, Michael Rudnin, our regular Michael Rudnin is here already. And uh, let's see who else we have here. I don't have the others. It kind of scrolls off and I don't want to mess with it because sometimes when I do that, we get into trouble. We're going to have a great program today. We're going to be talking about, and look here, I need everybody here to share this for one specific reason. Single payer, a lot of people don't understand what it's all about. People don't, they, they, they buy the crap that the, that the mainstream media tells them about government takeover of healthcare that they picked up from the right wing and some of the establishment Democrats. We can't allow that to happen. So therefore, we have to get this message out. Share, share, share. It is so important. Look, uh, to get started, uh, before I get into it, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and put my pitch out for um, joining. Well, maybe I should do it real quickly. I'm going to do it real quickly and then get, get directly into the program. This is a progressive show. This is a progressive show that belongs to you. You can call into this show at any time. Tell us what you want to talk about. And many times people have called in and actually changed the topic of the day. You have that power. But what we ask you to do is become a member. We need to get hundreds of members uh, uh, donating coffees to us. In other words, being subscribers. Patreon.com slash politics and right. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics and right. We'll ask you this during the show two more times in the middle of the show and at the end of the show. So let's get busy with the program. Please do remember this is a call-in show. Telephone number 646-716-716. 5812. Again, I would love to have questions if you don't understand what we're going to be talking about here on uh, specifically to single payer Medicare for all. All of you guys are going to get a shock whether you're working for an employer or not. If you're working for an employer, your insurance is going to go sky high because of the tax cut scam that, that uh, the Trump administration has passed. If you don't see it in your paycheck immediately by the rise in deductibles, by the rise in in uh, co-pays by the rise in the premiums themselves, you will see it in, in because you won't get a pay increase that you would have otherwise gotten. The company will take that pay increase to pay for that increase insurance costs that that tax cut scam caused in transferring your wealth to the wealthy. Welcome aboard, Tamara Opel. Okay, so here it is. The title of the show today is going to be purposefully... No, that's, that's a subtitle. The title of the show is... Stop the terribly bad reporting on single payer Medicare for all. And the subtitle, and this is the, the, the subtitle is even more important than the title. 
purposefully sloppy reporting about single payer Medicare for all is a more significant hurdle to overcome than the transition to the program itself. Remember that. That is very, very, very important. Here we go. This morning, I must admit to getting irate after reading an article in the New York Times about, uh, and the article was about the single payer Medicare for all health care push in California and throughout the nation. It is clear that the corporatocracy is biased against single payer. There's no doubt about that. Sadly, the fourth estate continues to be derelict in its duty in pointing out the realities. Purposefully sloppy reporting about single payer Medicare for all is a more significant hurdle to overcome than the transition itself. You see, the transition only requires us to make sure that the politicians fulfill our will. However, purposely bad reporting, what it does is it changes the psyche of the American people. And in changing the psyche of the American people, it would have them vote to elect people that don't have their interest at hand. In other words, they'll elect people that really won't give you single-payer Medicare for all system, which in effect is a, a yet another tax on you. They don't explain it that way. They try to make it seem as if government takeover of healthcare is something that, uh, that we are fighting about or needs to be fought about. But before I get to the program directly or directly on the issue of Medicare for All, I want to tell you, you know the NFL recently has passed, um, the, the, I guess they passed a, a, a law or whatever within their, their, their networks where they're telling the football players they can't, they can't kneel or anything anymore. You know, everybody have, they, they tend, the president is the culprit here, of course, in trying to make people believe that the reason these guys were protesting at the beginning of all these football games had anything to do with the flag, had anything to do with the military, had anything to do with patriotism. It had absolutely nothing to do with that. It was simply about police brutality, in, uh, wealth inequality. It also had to do with racial inequality. That's what this stuff was major, major about. And they, they have successfully changed the definition. You know, a lot of people talk about jocks. A lot, about, a lot of people talk about sports people. They're, they, many times they like to say they don't have much upstairs or whatever. I want to do a shout out to Steve Kerr, the uh, the, the guy from the the uh, Warriors, uh, the, the the Sacramento Warrior, the, the Warriors that are, are playing the Rockets right now. They asked him about what he thought, and I want to play this for you because I want to give this man kudos for actually seeing for what it is. It's about a minute and forty four seconds, and I think I have my echo problem resolved. And if I don't, I'd, I'm sure you guys will tell me about it. But here's what I want you to see. Um, nationalism, um, scaring people, um, it's idiotic, but uh, that's how the NFL has handled their business. And um, I'm proud to be in a league um, that understands patriotism in America is about free speech, and about um, peacefully protesting. Um, and I think our leadership in the NBA understands that um, when the NFL players, players were kneeling, they were kneeling to protest police brutality, to protest racial inequality. They weren't disrespecting the flag or the military, but our president decided to make it about that. The NFL followed suit, um, pandered to their fan base, uh, created this hysteria. And it's kind of what's wrong with our country right now. Is, you know, people in high places are trying to divide, um, divide us, uh, divide loyalties, make this about the flag, um, as if the flag is something other than uh, what it really is. It's, it's a representation of what we're about, which is diversity, peaceful protests, and abilities, right to free speech. So it's really ironic, actually, what the NFL is doing. Okay, now, isn't it great to have uh, a jock, now coach, that actually understands what the problem is, understood what the, understands what the problem is, calls out the NFL, calls out the, uh, calls out the president? I mean, I thought that was epic, so it's something that I really wanted to have uh, you guys here. But anyhow, we are now in the meat of the program. We are in the meat of the program. So, folks... Do you know what time it is? It's time for the weekly blog post. 
All right, all right, all right, all right. The weekly blog post, the weekly blog post, the title of the weekly blog post. And folks, if you're just coming in here, I need you to do something very importantly. Please go ahead and make sure to share this program. This specific issue affects every single American, whether you work for yourself, whether you work for an employer, whether you're getting Medicare, Medicaid, or anything else. And what I want to say specifically is you have been lied to. You, they have continuously lied to you. Welcome aboard, Lewis Johnson. They have continuously lied to you. And the reason we need these programs to be shared is for you to hear the truth and for Americans to hear the truth so that we can make the right choices in November. And so that we can make the right choices in the primary. Any progressive, or rather, any Democrat running in primaries that do not support or come out with whole, full-throatedly in support of Medicare for All, single-payer Medicare for All, they are not a part of the solution. They are part of the problem. If you have a, a, a if you have an election where there are two people running, one supporting it and one not, make sure to vote appropriately. You're voting your pocketbook. You're voting your personal economy. If you're just joining us, this is a very important program. Please share this on your wall. Please share this on your page. Please share this on Instagram and everywhere else. Here is the blog of the week. Title. Sloppy reporting misleads Americans about single-payer Medicare for All, and it starts as follows. It is an irrefutable fact that a single-payer Medicare for All healthcare system is not only more efficient, but costs much less than the healthcare system we have now in America. It is all about math. Math reigns. Math is absolute. No if, no buts, nothing. Anybody who tells you a, that our insurance companies competing against each other is more efficient than a single-payer system, we're only talking payer at this point. If they tell you that multiple insurance companies fighting for your, your, your premiums is more efficient than a single-payer system, they're lying to you and they are a mathematical fraud. It is a fact. This, there, there is no ifs. There is no buts. There is no gray area. It is absolute what I'm telling you, folks. And the reason they try to tell you otherwise and cloak it into uh, uh, what they like to say competition is because they're lying to you as far as what insurance really is. Insurance, as it is practiced today in America, having multiple insurance companies is just a risk management system to enrich a few. We'll go over that later. But folks, I need you to have that absolute statement plastered in your head because anybody who tells you otherwise, whoever they are, Democrat, Republican, agnostic, whoever that tells you multiple insurance companies competing is more e efficient than one insurance company, the government paying a bill, they are lying to you. It's a lie. It's, there's no gray area about it. It's a lie. Purposefully sloppy reporting about single-payer Medicare for All is a more significant hurdle to overcome than the transition to the program itself. This morning, a New York Times article piqued my interest. I got excited. The title of the piece, Single-Payer Healthcare in California, here is what it would take, was misleading. The title was misleading. I was getting ready, folks. I was getting ready to say, at last, the mainstream media is going to come out and tell us there is a pathway to single payer in the mainstream media. They were going to tell us because I was absolutely sure now that if a title comes out like that, they're going to tell you why it's possible for it to be done. Okay, so they misled us again. It was, it was what any thinking person who reads between the lines, an article that pretty much tells Americans the transition would be too complicated to become a reality. That is what they were saying. In effect, they were saying it was what any thinking person who reads between the lines, an, ar uh, lines, an article that pretty much tells Americans the transition would be too complicated to become a reality. Okay, by the way, this article is going to be on the front page on Daily Coast. On Sunday, I think they have it scheduled to get out at 8.15 uh, Central Time PM. Anyhow, the first diss in the article occurred early in the article as it's characterized Democrats adopting the single payer as merely a rallying cry. Oh, don't believe it. They just want to rile, rile the base. 
But we're not going to really have a single payer system. That is pretty much what they said. And I'm going to read that little section that they said it in. In other words, it will not come to pass, but it can be used to activate, fool a bunch of folks. The author writes the following. Even beyond California, many Democrats are hoping to energize supporters by taking a cue from Bernie Sanders' 2016 presidential campaign, which embraced a single-payer system, Medicare for All. But the idea primarily functions as a rallying cry. Really now? So in other words, you're saying progressive are going to lie to their base for something that can never be just to get them to vote. Don't you think Americans are tired of that? Don't you think that's been happening over and over and over and over and over again? Do you think they're going to fall for that crap again? No. Those of us supporting single-payer Medicare for All system, this ain't no joke. We are not talking about backing down. We are talking about this is a fight that we are going to win. And you know why we are going to win? Because the system right now is, is one step away from collapse. Bankruptcy is the only thing that most people who get sick with any kind of severe disease, even under the Affordable Care Act, go bankrupt about. But continuing, the author then posits the base of the article, which is what Americans have not thought through with single pair. Or rather, let's back up. The author then posits the base of the article, which is that Americans have not thought through what single pair really means. And here's what he said. He then said, Voters are thinking about the fundamental values associated with single payer, said Kelly Hall, an independent health consultant who works with the Service Employees International Union, United uh, Healthcare Workers in California, which has endorsed Mr. Newsom. Almost zero voters have thought about the policy implications. In this case, implications could, could be another word for booby traps. You see how they're making a negative connotation already. In, in, in this case, implications could be another word for booby traps. Even a state as big, wealthy, and liberal as California, with the world's fifth largest economy and nearly 40 million people, would find itself hamstrung by money, a legal uh, and regulatory ticket, and high-motivated oppression, or rather opposition. So there are the three things they were saying why it simply cannot happen. It simply cannot happen because the legalities that the federal government has on the use of Medicare, Medicaid, and these other programs... Number two, they want to say that regulations will also prevent it. And number three, highly motivated opposition. Well, we all, number three, I agree with, there's going to be highly motivated op uh, opposition from the pilferers. Yeah, they're going to oppose it, of course, because they no longer will be able to make all those unearned profits. In other words, profits that they don't deserve to get because they provide no value. You get a profit. If you want a profit, you, to get a profit. You must have value. You must be able to give a value for a profit. Okay? There is no value in what these guys are doing whatsoever. So, folks, let's, let's be clear about that. Anyhow, it is not the job of the voters. It is not the job of the voters to figure out how to implement a single payer. It is the job of the politicians and the experts not influenced by a for-profit healthcare system that depends on people being sick and the monopoly of being the arbiters of drug delivery. Right? Why are you going to put the burden on people, the average American citizen, oh, uh, they don't understand all the implications. Yeah, it, they don't need to understand all the implications. Single pair, best, most efficient. Now, how do we get there? There are people who went to college, people who did other things. It is their job to figure out how to get there. Americans say what they want. It is their job to get it out there. Now, what we have to do as progressives, we have to make the case. We have to let these people know why it is best in their best interest, we have to give them examples. If you take a look at our system here, if you go to Canada or, or the Great Britain or France or all these places that have a form of single payer, you don't see our media investigating how comes their prices are so much lower, how comes their people are so much more happy, how comes they can, if they get ill, they just walk into a hospital and they're taken care of, how comes they don't have to worry about being bankrupted? How comes they don't have to do any of those things? We're going to continue, and we're going to talk about that later on. Why not start, and this is what I'm telling, telling uh, what the, the, the media, why not start with the absoluteness of the mathematical implications of single-payer? Start with the absolute nature of, the, of, of, of single-payer. 
that if you don't have to pay executives, if you don't have to pay shareholders, if you don't have to advertise, if you don't have to do all those things, all those costs are eliminated. That's right off the top. They don't want, it to, they don't want you to think about these things. They don't want you to think about that because they're lying to you. And I'm going to address my two conservatives that are in the room as I'm complete with this stuff because this is an argument they simply cannot win because it is math, because it is absolute. It is not ideological. It is math and absolute. Right-wing nations, left-wing nations in this world, first, what they like to call first world nations, all have realized the math and that is why they are doing what they're doing. Now, there, there's some pushback in Canada, some pushback in England, and the reason are in, in the United Kingdom. And the reason why is, again, every, all these profiteers want to make a profit, and the only way to do that is to put chaos in the system. That's what they're trying to do. Everything else, so let me repeat that paragraph. Why not start with the absoluteness of the mathematical implications of single payer? Everything else is a process with the private sector's wish to continue to profit through pilfering modal. In other words, they just want to pilfer the American people. It's not that they're bad or that they hate the American people. It's that they just want your money. They want to be more and more profitable each time with whatever and however they know how to. Folks, this is important stuff. Please share it on your wall. Other folks need to understand this. The rest of the article is an enumeration of all obstacles that a single-payer transition would face. None of them more, were more difficult than the draconian change to the Affordable Care Act whose real difficulty was placating drug companies, healthcare deliverers, insurance companies, and all, all at the expense of patients. Think about that. That's what it's all about. No ifs and buts. Here are some irrefutable facts. And I want you to know this. This is important. These facts that I'm going to mention here are irrefutable. They are absolute. There are no two ways about it. And here's what it goes. Here are some irrefutable facts. Having multiple insurance companies for primary health care makes no sense. They are risk managers that split the nation into pools of sick and not so sick people to ensure that excess premiums collected go into the pockets of executives and shareholders. It is also costly to market this evil business model to convince Americans that one insurance company is better than the other. Paying a bill requires no innovation. If I, pay, if, if I asked you folks, if I said, you, you pay, let's say you pay 10 bills a month, and your bills average, anyway, let's say a hundred, uh, uh, your, your bills average a thousand dollars. So all your bills average a thousand dollars. And I'm going to volunteer to pay it for, pay your bills for you. And I look at you and I say, okay, to pay your thousand dollars in bills, why don't you give me two hundred dollars? You would send me flying. That's what insurance companies do to you today. They tell you, in order for me to pay your bills, I am going to charge you up to 20%. It used to be up to near 30-something, 40%. Now, I'm going to charge you 20%. So you get sick. Your bills, the, the total amount of money, all you guys I collect from you guys, I keep in 20%. I'm pocketing 20% of that. And they're actually pocketing more because they're involved in other businesses that profit from them paying themselves. They don't tell you that. So anyhow... They are risk managers that split the nation into pools of sick and not-so-sick people to ensure that excess premiums collected go into the pockets of the executives and shareholders. It is also costly to market this evil business model, okay? It is evil. Paying a bill requires no innovation, so there is no need for a profit incentive. None. There is no need for a profit incentive. Any inefficiencies one would say occurs in Medicare is much less than the inefficiency, than the expenses of having to have multiple databases, multiple executives, shareholder value. All those things are mitigated. You could have a ton of waste if it is just the government doing it. And it still won't add up to the waste in the private sector. Again, it's, we don't have to fight about this. We just have to look at the numbers. These are mathematical facts. Medicare overhead, 3%. 
when they want to when they want to use Medicare Advantage, which is private insurance companies serving Medicare, they get a twenty percent. I don't remember twenty percent, but they get a higher bonus, which in effect is a transfer of your monies to the owners of that company, the shareholders. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. It is so important for you to understand how they're pilfering you. It is so important for you to understand that the reason you're paying these high rates, it's theft. They're misleading you. They're lying to you. And in doing so, because you have believed it in the past, they have suckered you. They have suckered you. They have suckered all of us. And it's important for you to understand how. It's important to, uh, for you to understand why. So I continue. Drug and pharmaceutical companies are just the welfare recipients of government-funded drug development. Yes. They don't tell you that either. Don't let their advertising and cries fool you. You pay them twice. You pay them twice. And here's how. You pay them twice for the drugs. You pay to develop them when, with the taxpayer dollars. A study was just made that shows that all the new drugs developed between 2016, 20, uh, 2010 and 2016, guess, who, guess how they were invented? Through the NIH, the National Institute of Health. That's who funded them. When it was ready for them to monetize it, in other words, to sell the drug, it was sent to the drug companies. And guess what? The drug companies didn't say, okay, when we market this guy, we're going to give a cut to the American people since they paid for it. They said, no, we're going to keep it all. That is what we're talking about. How did they, and it's legal what they're doing? Yes, it's legal. Why? Because they paid the politicians to do this for them. So I continue. Don't let their advertising and cries fool you at all. You pay them twice for the drugs. You pay to develop them with taxpayer dollars. And then they rip you off, not to recover any expenses, but under the tenet of what the market will bear. Do you know what that means? And what will the market bear? You know what the market will bear? Your bankruptcy. In other words, if you are sick and they prescribe a drug to you and you're sick and you believe, you honestly believe that's the only drug you can use, they can charge you whatever they want for that drug, but you can only pay whatever you have to pay for that drug. And what is the limit that you have to pay for that drug? Up and until your bankruptcy. In other words, the drug companies have an ingenious way of taking all of your wealth if you get sick. We don't have a system in this country that mitigates that. So remember, remember, you have to be headstrong because those guys that are writing the ads that lie to you, that tells you somehow a single-payer Medicare for all system that controls drug prices, that ensures that you're not rip off, is somehow communism. And they like to say all these things. Folks, you have to not buy into it. Watch your pocketbook. Watch your personal economy. They are screwing you. They are screwing with you and they are lying to you. It's hard as hell for me to sit back here and just let them lie to you. Continuing at that part, they want your bankruptcy because that is how they know they cannot get any more out of you. They've maximized out of you. That's bankruptcy. And at that point, you would think it ends there. No, it doesn't end there. After the drug company has pilfered you and into bankruptcy, they're still not going to let you die. So after you're bankrupt, guess what you qualify for? Medicaid. So then instead of them taking all of your personal assets, guess what they're doing next? They're taking the taxpayer dollars. So they win again. They win again. Now they take the monies three times. They take the taxpayer money when you're developing the drug. They take the taxpayer money. Uh, they take your money when you have to pay for the drug. And then they take the taxpayer's money again when you're bankrupt. And then you have to get Medicaid. Folks, that is a business that you can't lose in. And they never lose. Look at their profit margins better than anybody else. They can't lose because everybody gets sick. Because Whenever, when someone is sick, whatever they ask to be paid, they pay. I have a doctor, a friend who is a doctor, sat down in Starbucks with me. 
and he was just shaking his head. I said, how come you have the same problem? You're in the medical field. You're a doctor. Well, my daughter needed a $3,000 prescription. She couldn't get it. Uh, the insurance company couldn't pay for it. They said they won't pay for it because of some clause in the insurance company, and I paid for it out of pocket. And it's $3,000 per month for this one drug. This is what we're talking about. And this can happen to everybody. So if you don't heed my warning, if you don't raise hell, if you don't make sure that the only people get elected going forward are people who support a single payer system, you are messing with your own personal economy. You're messing with what you could possibly be leaving back for your kids. You're messing with your entire life. This is no joke. We have to stop being gullible. We have to stop allowing these high price consultants who know how to make who know how to work with psychologists and psychiatrists to push the right button. The same way the Russians uh, created themes and memes that were able to convince the vulnerable. That is what our own corporations are doing to you. I promise you, everything that I'm mentioning here you can find if you want to. You can look this up if you want to. Or you can choose to simply buy what the Cato Institute, what the Heritage Foundation scientifically, psychologically cook up to lie to you. That's your choice. Continuing with the blog. But folks, you have to get, you have to stop being gullible. Why aren't taxpayers getting their fair share from massive pharma companies' profits? Because we have a media that willfully concentrated on the issues least important to Americans. That's the reason why. That is the reason why. When Americans want something done, they eventually do it. It, however, requires strong, persistent, moral leaders to stand up and take all the incoming flack and hurdles and keep marching on. That is how America built the Panama Canal, what seemed an, at that time an engineering impossibility. That is how we got to the moon. Also, that seemed an impossibility. That is how we got civil rights for all, women's, L uh, LGBTQ's rights, even though they were not initially popular. That is how we did it. We got to do it again. All of you guys that are listening to me right now need to share and need to make your friends know these facts. You need to know that, yes, we've been gullible for a long time. We need to know that, yes, we've been screwed for a long time. But at some time, you stop. At some time, at some time you have to fight back. And that time is now because more and more people are going to be placed into bankruptcy. Especially after the tax cut scam and they see what their health care bill is going to or their health insurance bill is going to look like in, in October. And that for the year of uh, and, and see what their deductibles are going to look like and see what their co-pays are going to look like. This is not hyperbole, folk. And some of you are got, some companies are not going to try to throw the bill at you right away. They're going to do it a little bit slower because right now, Donald Trump, in as much as he's a creep and as much as he's an evil dude and as much as he's bad, he's good for a lot of corporations. He's good. He, he allowed them to bring back a lot of their money into this country for virtually nothing. Well, a, you know, a small percentage. Monies that was sitting offshore for decades, well, for years. And that's what he did. So when Americans, they, they want something done, okay? If, 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 if Americans are informed truthfully, they will force politicians to do their job. Americans will ultimately realize that all the obstacles to single payer are not financial, but instead caused by the private sector's refusal to accept that it is immoral to profit from and depend on people being continually sick for growth. Our current medical system depends on keeping you sick. Our current medical system depends on a lot of you more. You notice that they have a lot of new illnesses. Uh, they have these syndromes now that, oh, st your foot can't stop moving syndrome or some kind of can't sleep syndrome. In the olden days, they just give you some tea and say, go get to hell to bed. Now everything is a sickness. Everything is a disease. Do you think everything is a disease or a sickness that needs, to be, uh, that needs to be quantified in the medical journals? No, it doesn't. But the reason it is done that way is because for every one of these little sicknesses, they can give you a pill. 
For every one of these little sicknesses, you make a doctor visit. For every one of these little sicknesses, you can go to the hospital, right? So if we turn everything into a sickness, you, can, you now have to pay to unsick yourself. You now have to pay to somehow be well. Even though I get up with creaks and pains every day, I don't see a damn doctor for that. And you know why? Because as a human being, I know at, uh, after I reach a certain age, I'll have those creaks and pains. But now you have these creaks and pains and on TV they say, hey, we can solve that. We can give you this pill. And guess what? You're just fine. They said it with, with the, you know, now they can give you all these opioids that they used to give you to make you feel good, to take all the pain away. And what they've done is they've created a whole lot of drug addicts. And now that we have all the drug addicts, they make even more money because they now have to cure the drug addicts, right? All these people that are ODing on opioids, every time they have to call the ambulance to take them in for a quick treatment of methadone or whatever, Kaching, more money for the more money for the health industry. It's a circulating thing. We go ahead and we 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 tell you you are sick. We give you a drug that makes you sicker. When you come back in, we then charge you even more. We got to pay for that ambulance. We got to pay for the methadone. We got to pay for the the X-ray. We got to pay for all these things, folks. You are being played. You are being used, and that's what it's all about. And I would love anybody to call in and feel free. You know, I'm a very nice guy. To call in 646 716 5812. 646. You know what? I have two conservatives in the in the thread that are raising hell uh, about these things that I'm saying. I would love for any one of them or both, if you have the guts, and you know I'm very nice. I don't I don't shout at anybody or anything like that. I give you a chance to say your piece. So if you really want to defend the evil system that we have now. If you really want to convince my listeners that this system isn't evil, that this system isn't a capitalist, a capitalist boondoggle, give me a call, 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Are you really convicted or convinced that you are right? I tell you what I am convinced of. I'm convinced that you're absolutely wrong. I am convinced of that. But you know, I would love, I would love for somebody to call in and refute me. And you know, if you win, if you, if you, win, if you prove your point, I'll be the first to say, oh my God, you're absolutely right. But guess what I do know? I know that is unlikely for two reasons. Very few have the guts to call in because deep inside, deep in their hearts, they know the system is evil. Deep in their hearts, they know that they're protecting it simply on ideological grounds and that the ideological, that the party of their ideological beliefs have convinced them that this is a way that they must do things. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go on to that page. Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. So I'm going to go to uh, start talking to you guys, but I'd love for somebody to call in. Uh, why don't you call in? Uh, six, four, s let, let's, let's go back here. Looks like I'm going to have to bring this baby back up. But call in at 646-716-5812. 646-716-5812. Let me go ahead and bring this baby up with all your comments because I really want to hear your comments. Let's see what it's going to be. Okay, folks, I need you to uh, share the show. I don't see. Let's. There we go. Let's see if she shows up here. Come on, come on, come on. Open in Facebook. There we go. You know how it is sometimes. Uh, there's, one, there's one beef that I continuously have with uh, Facebook, and that is the way that they, they do this thing. They should do it quite a bit differently. But, you know, who am I? Are they going to listen to me? No, they're not. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and see what you guys have to say. Come on, that's not what I want. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. I said to get, how do I get out of there, get out of there, get out of that, uh, grow this baby. Okay, close the app. All right. All right, folks, I am I'm having a little bit of problems bringing up your comments, but I promise you that I'm going to be with the comments. Moment. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Let's see. All right, let me go ahead and try to load them because what I want to do is I don't want to load and get into the middle of, a, of an argument with the two of you or with too many of you without having all the comments uh, loaded. Okay, looks like all the comments are loaded. 31 minutes, 26 minutes. 
All right, uh, let's see. There we go. One minute. I'm trying to figure out what direction they're in. It looks like, all right, it looks like I can start from the top. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Okay, coming down. All right, Michael Dean Newton. Hello, hello, Michael Dean Newton. Michael Rudnan. Hurdle, uh, you say anything to add about NFL protest? I saw that you have a little, uh, I'll, I'll look at that later on. Hello, Kathleen Morgan. Thank you for being here. Stickney, thank you for being here as well. Okay, Michael Rennan, the super majority of the people want a better healthcare system. To that end, single payer is the way to go. It's the absolutely only way that makes sense. Uh, Tamara, uh, uh, Wisconsin progressive here. I love, you know, Wisconsin, you guys are going to change the nation in November. Because first of all, you're going to make sure not to reelect that governor of yours, uh, Scott Walker. And you're going to do a whole lot of other good things because you just elected a Supreme Court justice that is a true liberal. You did, guys did a great thing. I'm so proud of Tamara Opp Oppel and all you guys out there. Uh, money trickles up. You're right about that. Single pair works for, uh, this is Michael Rudnan, and, and Money Trickles Up came from uh, Marilee Trevino. Uh, let's see, Michael Rudnan, single pair works for the people by increasing coverage to every American while reducing costs to the taxpayer by $500 billion annually. And it could actually be more if we negotiate drugs, but it looks like I have a caller, so I'm going to bring that caller in. Uh, let's see. 765, you're in. Talk to me. Hello, Alberto. It's Mike D. Newton. Mr. Newton, talk to me. I I'm a I was a UK citizen, but yeah. I'm now an American citizen. Yes, sir. I had a stroke here. Uh huh. I lost my house. I lost everything. My wife had an illness. She also lost everything, and she died. And I've been saying this. My I just went back for two weeks to visit my mum in England. And because my father and my brother got cancer, right? Yes, and sir. And died. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. His wife, his wife still has her house. The kids are being, they put a medical plan in place to scan the kids because of, you know, genetically cancer mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Now, one of your people on the, the post, is saying that the UK system is broke. No, it isn't. I have lots and lots of friends and lots and lots of experience going there and visiting them, and the, the health care is excellent there. It's a fallacy. I don't know where this idiot is getting his facts from. Here in the States, I live in Indiana, it is the worst medical place they won't talk to you unless you've got money. It's ridiculous. The first thing that happened after my stroke is a guy walked in, and I had insurance, a guy walked in to work out the finances a minute. I couldn't speak. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. And also, when I had my stroke, the drug that they can inject in you to reverse it, they didn't give it to me. Because they reckoned I was drunk. <laughs> so I still have these deficits now. So when people say that the U.S. system is better and the U.K. was broke, they are full of it. I know. I know for a fact. We've got to get a single payer here. We've, we've just got to do it. You're on the right track, mate. Thank you so kindly. What was your name again, sir? Michael, right? Michael Dean Newton. Okay, Michael, let me tell you something yeah. because I'm, I'm glad that you come on because there are two folks that are, that are two conservatives in the room. I, I think it's Mike Cizak and also uh, uh, Daniel Lado. And let me tell you, they are representative of an ideology. Uh, you know, and, and again, these are I consider these guys friends. They're not bad guys. But, but I'd like, I'd like to... Let me finish, and then no, I'll, no, let you, I'll, I'll let you write back here. Where the hell they getting the facts? That's where I was about to tell you now. Okay, and I don't. Let me tell you. There are two kinds of people, right? There are people who would look at, uh, number, look at form, numbers and formulas. In other words, I'm an engineer by training, uh, an engineer by training. So right. here is the deal. I understand very well numbers. 
So it is a, it is a, and that's why when I started right. the show, I said it is an irrefutable fact that single payer is more efficient. Period. There's no, uh, there's absolutely no way you can have insurance companies competing among each other, having all those expenses and and bastardizing the the insurance pool, the, the entire sick pool, and somehow be more efficient than just having one insurance company looking at the entire country as one risk pool. It is impossible for that not to be. Correct. Right. Now, secondly. The reason why these guys are the way they are is there is a, that we have institutes in this country that got started when uh, Lewis Powell created this thing named the Powell Manifesto, which realized that liberalism, when, as people got more liberal, they got more intelligent. As they got more intelligent, they realized that, yes, you don't need a whole lot of insurance companies. You need one if you're talking about things like health care. And they didn't want that to happen because in the chaos that we have in our medical industry is, what, is where profits are made. You make profits where there is care. Chaos, and that is what they want. Now, what, what the, when I, the title of my show today was, uh, uh, had to do with the, the, derelict, the dereliction of duty of the, in, uh, of the media. Michael Ledo, I mean, Ledo and, C, yeah, Ledo and Cizak, the reason that they are still misled is we have a derelict press. In other words, if our press went to England... Excellent. If our press went to Canada, if our press went to uh, Taiwan, if they went to France, Germany, and all these other places, they would see the medical system in action, and then they would be able to show Americans what it's like. There's no person in England or these other places of average stature that would change their system to look like the American system. None. And you know what is the funny thing about it? The only way you can determine if something is successful is the outcome. And the outcome in America is much worse right. than the outcome in Canada, in, in, in England, and all these other countries. So these guys are fighting against numbers, and they're fighting against numbers simply because of ideology. Go ahead, Mike. Exactly. And <clears throat> You know, I, I'm coming from a real practical. I'm not like reading this stuff. It's my own experience. My sister has cancer, and she lives in France. Same thing. All medical costs covered. She hasn't lost her house. She's great life. You, you know. You know, it, it is funny. Most because of my friends, because I'm in, the, I'm in the fifty to sixty range where we're getting unhealthy, we're getting diseases. So all of my friends back in England are all getting sort of ill, and they never think, can I afford this? You that should. never enters their head. The, look, Michael, as a, the definition but of I, having a society, the definition of having a society is to ensure that things are better than if we had to do things alone. And what these guys prefer is for you to do things alone. Then go ahead and form another society. Go, go ahead and go be as, as non-societal as you want to be. But here's the reality. You have a true life experience. I have a true life experience with a wife who has lupus. A lot of people have true life experience. And, and, and yet what's interesting is most of them come around only when they've had that experience that could bankrupt them. And then they come around. They just ideologically refuse to accept it. Michael, is there anything else you want to add before I go ahead and answer some more questions in the room? No, that's it. Look, thank you so kindly. Thanks very for, much, Roberto. Thank you so kindly for calling in, Michael. Your experience and what you've gone through is extremely important for other Americans to hear. In fact, what I'm going to do with your particular story is we're going to cut that out and place that one as a standalone, um, as a standalone uh, blog. Did you re did you register in the room as well, right, Michael? Yeah. Please, please go ahead, Michael. And uh, Michael, please go ahead and uh, make sure you leave your information in the room, and then and, and we'll 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 you know make sure that you're taken care of. Okay. Okay, mate. Take care. Keep up the work. Thank you, good mate. All right. Let's see. Let's continue into the room now with the discussion. Uh, let's see, Merlin Travenio. Unfortunately, any movement needs the support of wealthy white men. No. Uh, let me tell you. The truth of the matter is what we need is to, to change the frame of reference, uh, my dear friend, Mr. Trevino. What we need to do is as follows. We need to inert, innately accept our own power. When One of the things I ask the people on this board to do is I say, please, share our program. And one of the reasons I ask to share is not because, oh, I want to have politics done right everywhere or whatever. I do want to have politics right everywhere, right? But... 
The reason I want to have politics done right everywhere is because we have information to share. We have the information to refute all the evil that's out there. And I call the mainstream media on this issue evil because they know better. You know, they go research other issues. They go research, okay? Why don't they research this issue as well and tell Americans the truth? Why when the Republicans and the Cato Institute and the Heritage Foundation lies to them? Why does why is it that even a reporter here can say how much how difficult it would be to change the laws to implement Medicare for all? Here's what's funny. Obamacare required a whole lot more legislative rules than it would be HR 676, the thing that makes that creates Medicare for all. Think about that. Obamacare required tens of thousands of pages. We can get rid of all of that by just having a single payer system. We don't have to have all those rules anymore because you're sick, you're covered. You're sick, you're covered. People say, well, that will bust the budget. No, 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 no. All people get sick right now. They either, some die and they get covered. The same thing with, with uh, health care. We decide what we're going to pay for and then we pay for it. And you know what? That doesn't stop the rich person who wants Cadillac health care. If you want a private room where the nurses deliver flowers to you every day, you can buy an insurance policy that gives you that. So then it's not like we won't kill out all insurance companies. If they want to create a value for people, they after we have basic health care for everybody, if they want if you want to pay extra so that you're pampered, eh, buy an insurance policy that does that. But let's take care of people. Let's be humane. Let's be humane. Okay, let's be humane. Let's go back to the thing here. It is not uh, John Lewis, Lewis Johnson, it's not correctable. I'm stuck still. The costs are nowhere near foolishness in the U.S. Okay, let's say Mike Cisak. Lewis, we have a hybrid single-pair system here. Which is worse, making things cost even more? Mike Cisak, math is all the answer that I need to give you for that. Math. Okay. No senior citizen is ever going to give up their Medicare. We don't want them to give up their Medicare at all. We don't want them to give up their Medicare at all. We don't want them to give up their Medicare at all. Remember that. What we want is for everybody, for everybody to have Medicare. We want everybody to have Medicare. That is what we want. That is what we're talking about. So don't be fooled. Don't dare think otherwise. It's very important that you understand that. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's, let, let's see. Yes, math is absolute, especially the $400 billion deficit Medicare runs each year. We can fix a $400 uh, deficit very easily. If it's really $400 billion, and I don't, I don't remember it being $400 billion. If I recall, that was a fiction by the Republicans because of what they did, the money that they took out of Medicare after the Obamacare uh, passed. But anyway, there's an easy way to fix that. You know how Medicare is paid for? On capital gains and on every piece of income, it's like 3.5%. Make it 4%. Problem solved. I don't think anybody's going to miss that. And then it solves the problem completely. You see, you guys want problem solved, but you don't want any taxes. In other words, you want to pill for the little man while you have guys that are making money gambling on Wall Street. When the stock market, when, when Steve Jobs or when, when a Bezos stock goes up in price and he suddenly, today he makes a billion dollars in the appreciation in his stock. Did he do anything to earn that? So why not tax that? Come on, folks. Learn where worth is. You are more worthy than that. You are more worthy than Bezos. Your money is what's making Bezos rich, not his intellect. The, intellig the intelligent people for Bezos are the ones who are making the robots. The intelligent people for Bezos are the ones who are running the accounting. The intelligent people for Bezos is, are all the people that are making the products that Bezos sells. Yet Bezos makes all the spoils on that? We have a corrupt economic model. And it goes to healthcare. It goes to everything that we do. But we also have an industry that is there to promote that evil economic model. And it is up to us to see the truth. It is up to us to see the reality and not be scared to put that out. And that's why I ask you to share this. All right, let's continue. Uh, Daniel Ledeau, the profit motive is proven, uh, proven to increase efficiency. 
The profit motive is so proven to increase efficiency that all the other major countries in the world's uh, medical networks are more efficient than ours. Oh my God. So, I mean, how can you continuously look at facts? You look at evidence and come and say something like that, my dear friend, Daniel Ledo. I love you, my brother, but that makes no sense what you just said, my dear friend. Reality, reality, reality. If something costs less with better outcomes, it is more efficient, period. There are no two ways about that. If I am getting a successful service and that service costs me less, then the service that doesn't get as good a result and costs more is not as an efficient. It's not as efficient. That's a fact. How is it that you cannot see that, my dear friends? Okay, let's continue. Uh, Mike, uh, John, Mike, as long as Medicare is limited to a specific condition, it is not a single-payer system. Uh, look, Medicare is, is a hybrid-type single-payer. We need to make it completely single-payer. All right, Daniel Ledo, you, you are repeating uh, tired points? Or, uh, okay, that's, let's see, let's see. Uh, administrative cost. Okay, uh, Mike C. Like, merely administrative costs are calculated by the administrative costs divided by the number of people covered. It's simply, it is simple to calculate. Problem is the liberals are taking the full budget and dividing it by the people covered. Look, here is the deal. Administrative costs is defined however, I don't want to say however you want to de define it, but the fact of the matter is, if you do the, if you do the same for private health care, if you compute based on the numbers for private health care and, I mean, for private insurance and for Medicare, the numbers are absolute. It's 3 point something percent versus 20 percent. I mean, there's no two arguments about it. How do we determine those numbers? Total amount of dollars in, how many of those dollars in go into supporting health care? If that is 97 percent, then, then that's a 3 percent overhead, period. If when you look at private insurance and you put in all the monies and, and only 80% of that money goes towards healthcare, that's only a 20%, that's a, tw or rather that's a 20 percent overhead. There are no two ways about it, okay? You can try to mix the numbers however you want to, Mr. Dear CSAC. That's an absolute fact, what I just said. Uh, let's see what else is here. And for those people who have missed what you're talking about, I'll go ahead and, and, and put that in again. Okay, let's see. We're the only industrial nation in the world that does not provide health care. That's true, René Perpetua. Uh, let's see, Mike Cisak, I looked up that up, Egberto, and actually these companies are paying the majority of research costs because the GOP are reducing the money to NIH and other government. Again, you miss the point. You miss the point. You can say that Donald Trump has cut the NIH budget this year. There's one thing Donald Trump knows, right? Uh, these are multi-year projects. So for, for, uh, for house clean or for house, for looking good, the NIH budget was stopped or, or was cut dramatically this year. Guess what's going to happen next year and the years coming, going forward? I guarantee you that NIH budget is coming back. You know why? And let me tell you why it's coming back. It's not coming back because the politicians are so, such nice people. It's coming back because the same drug industry is going to tell them that they need more research, and that research is not going to be used using private dollars. That research will be using public dollars. That's the truth. And we have to, and, and by the way, for all those drugs that were developed with, with uh, let, let, let's, let's give you that point if you, for argument's sake. Let's also start giving Americans their share of whatever the drug companies paid, uh, you know, uh, the drug companies are charging their people for drugs. Guess what that'll do immediately? That will immediately put us back in the black. But folks, we're running out of time. We only have two minutes. So what I have to do here right now is close this baby down. So before I go, I have to tell you guys that this is a progressive show. I ask you to please share it. I ask you to like the page Politics and Right with Egberto Willis. I ask you to follow Egberto Willis on Twitter. And all of you that are leaving messages that need answered in the, uh, in the, in the post, I will answer them uh, eventually sometime today in the post. I uh, thank you guys for coming here. I want to remind you guys that this is a progressive show that needs your support. So I ask you, I ask you to go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right. Please go ahead and, and uh, 
give us a coffee, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the program. We need a whole lot of subscription. Actually, we need hundreds of subscriptions to ensure that this remains viable. But what we are here to do is to tell you the truth. This is a, this is a very serious program uh, that we, we talked about today, and I hope that you share it because, again, you're not going to get it in this terms on the mainstream media because they cannot. They depend on the monies from the drug companies. They depend on the money from the uh, from the healthcare industry. They depend on the money from the oil industry. So the things that we were going to talk about, you're not going to talk about in detail on these shows. And please, again, if you're just coming on, share the program. Please also subscribe to Politics Done Right. There's a lot to come. There's much, much more to come. As you know, we are also all over the country. We travel and we bring you uh, pertinent news many times. What isn't covered appropriately or the way it should be covered in the mainstream media. I want to thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know what? You know what? I am out. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.